When you file for an intervener status, you are seeking a status to represent not the parties, but represent everybody else in the country. Highwood was an interesting case. It was a Jehovah's Witness case of a member of a congregation who was kicked out of his congregation for drinking and for being inappropriate with his family. He then challenged this decision at the court level. That case went to, you know, lower court, upper court, went, ended up finally going to Supreme Court. And our position was this, courts have no business in the private religious dealings of faith communities. You know, you always think any decision you make is it within the parameters of the six principles? If it's not, then we're not doing any justice. So we took a look at it from the perspective of the Panjpiyari. If there's a peshi and, and the Panjpiyari make a decision, if the person doesn't like it, can they go to the court and the court then is going to review the decision of the Panjpiyari? It doesn't make any sense and it's not going to stand. So that's where we start to see how cases somewhere else can have implications for us at six. Loyola was a Catholic high school in Quebec. They were being forced by the Quebec government to teach an ethics and religion course from a secular perspective. Loyola said, we are by nature Catholic. You cannot force us or expect us to teach our own faith to our students for that period from a secular perspective. And the government said, no, no, just for that one period, you will be secular. Let's assume they lose all Khalsa schools all Gurdwara schools will be forced to teach a course that government wants them to teach. So we took two different perspectives here. One was religion is often practiced communally and organizations should also have the right to be protected for freedom of religion. And our second perspective was that it is a misunderstanding of secularism to say that to be secular for a period of the day and it's okay because for the rest of the day, you don't have to be that way. You can't force someone to be secular, that you can't force them to be religiously neutral for even a second, let alone a period. This is a case about them wanting to open up a law a school and the refusal of the Law Society of BC and the Law Society of Ontario to recognize that law school. Our perspective was not about that issue. Our perspective was about the standard of review when it comes to charter issues. There's different levels of review. The highest level is correctness. Correctness means the court will look at a decision taken by a body, whether that's a tribunal or someone else, and see if they would have made the same decision. That's correctness. And then there's levels below that if they follow the rules, that they can take whatever decision they want. And the court can say, we might have personally disagreed with this, we'll allow that decision to stand, even though we might have disagreed with it. The court has to, when they decide, look at that the administration of law is fairness of the law. Charter has so much significance that the correctness standard should apply. That was not an argument that the court accepted, but that remains our position. If there's charter rights involved, then the highest level of review really should apply. These Jewish residents of a condominium wanted to build sukkah huts for their religious observance during their holiday. So these are huts in which they go and they have a meal. And they wanted to build them on their balconies. And the condo corporation said, no, you aren't allowed to build them on the balconies. We don't allow any structures on balconies. You can go and have this sukkah hut collectively somewhere else. And they were saying, no, it's a part of our faith that we want to do it this way. And this court hearing was heard in a way that you had both sides bringing in Jewish experts. We as individuals of faith know that a faith journey is subjective to each individual. 
So one rabbi is saying, no, these guys have an obligation to build a sukkah hut and do it on their balcony. And another is saying, well, they don't need to do it on their balcony. They can go do it somewhere else. Sincerity of belief became the issue. How sincerely these four families believe that individual sukkah huts are the only way for them to do the prayers. So it was a battle of experts and the judge then has to hear both sides and decide which is the correct practice. And this was actually the case with a number of Sikh instances as well, where you had one side say that the stad is religiously necessary, and you had the other side say, no, this is a cultural thing and they don't need to wear it. Amsalam stood for a principle that a person's sincerely held belief should be accommodated if it has a nexus with religion, and we shouldn't be looking for experts to support that belief. And that was absolutely essential for our Sikh cases, and that's why WSO intervened. So Multani stood for freedom of religion, specifically on the Kirpan, but more generally about how religion can be accommodated. It's still taught in law schools across Canada. And that actually speaks to WSO's advocacy that we have been a part of these cases that have changed the way freedom of religion is, is understood, the way it's applied. I still have sick law students telling me that they've studied these cases and they know that WSO is a part of them. Donating to the WSO is supporting an organization that has had a considerable history and body of experience in not just dealing with the here and now issues, but looking ahead and preventing the issues down the road.